Observer.com. I'm going to do the raw report so everyone get out of my way. This show opened up with a Cody Rhodes promo where he came out and is the biggest baby face on the history of the planet Earth. And he's crying and they're chanting, thank you, Cody. And they're doing Cody chants and he's selling his arm huge and he's doing his, his singing thing with one arm. And uh, finally, Seth's music hits and Seth comes out and says, listen, I still don't like you, but you beat me three times and I respect you. And your father would be proud of what happened last night. And he shakes Cody's hand. He limps out of the ring, not doing his dancing or his stupid laugh or anything. Dan he walks out of the ring. He goes backstage. And Cody keeps, you know, pumping up the fans. I love you. He kisses the fans and the whole nine yards. He starts heading to the back. And this diabolical Seth comes out, hits him in the back with a sledgehammer. Tears his shirt off. You see the bruising everywhere. He beats on him as these idiot security guys just stand there like morons. And uh, that's the end of Cody for a while. And the key was that Cody, before he got beaten up again, was suggesting that he might be back in four weeks to win the Money in the Bank contract so that he could get his championship match. Because that's the whole story of Cody is he wants to get this title. So uh, this was the best thing on the show. And uh, the show was all downhill from there. So uh, I guess I can continue on to uh, Dana Brooke beat Becky Lynch for the. Are you? Did I really see this? Bros. Dude. Becky Lynch. You guys know who Becky Lynch is? I do. Becky Lynch is in a championship match the night before, okay? Yeah. She has the match won, but the pin is stolen from her, okay? So now they have another random women's match in the main event to determine a number one contender. And even though she had the win the night before but was screwed, oh, she's not in this match. No, she's in the opener for no reason against Dana Brooke. So the match starts, all the 24-7 nerds run out, and they're going all crazy. In the melee, in the melee, Dana Brooke rolls up and pins to Zawa. She's now the 24-7 champion. Becky's like, dude, what is going on here? I challenge you right now for that 24-7 title. So... It is, in fact, Becky Lynch versus Dana Brooke for the 24-7 title. Asuka's music hits. Becky is distracted. Dana Brooke rolls up and pins Becky Lynch to retain the 24-7 title. Bro, all you nerds out there listening right now, none of you, none of you had the balls in the prediction contest to predict that Becky Lynch would face Dana Brooke for the 24-7 title and get pinned. Dude, I would have made you a plaque the size of this house if you would have predicted that and won. But no, none of you were in a contest where you're encouraged to say something crazy None of you came up with something that nutty. Then we have a Miz TV segment where Riddle comes out. You guys know Riddle? Yeah, Riddle was in the main event of the previous pay-per-view, and he was pinned in the middle of the ring by Roman Reigns. Riddle then went on to get a, a championship match with Shinsuke Nakamura against the Usos on Friday, and he also got pinned in that match. Well, now he comes out and he decides, I want a championship match against Roman Reigns. So, of course, you know, he's going to get a championship match. So they end up uh, with Maurice out there, and they talk about, uh, speaking of balls, uh, Riddle goes, you have tiny balls. I was so caught off guard. This was the second best thing on the show. I thought they were going to do one of their usual WWE things where they do, like, some euphemism or whatever. <laughs> I laughed. I laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed at Riddle's delivery. And anyway, uh, then Riddle gets attacked by Ciampa. Because, of course, why not? And then we never see Chump again, like we haven't for weeks. And then uh, Riddle faces The Miz, and uh, he tears his pants off. Miz is getting heat on Riddle in his underwear. Maurice throws in the purse, and uh, Miz tries to use it, but Riddle avoids it. It's the RKO and wins. So now for sure he's in line for a championship match because, you know, he beat The Miz in his underwear. 
We had the Street Profits versus the Usos, and uh, no one's allowed to beat the Usos, which leads to programs where no one believes that anyone can actually win the belts from the Usos, so nobody cares. So we have a championship contenders match. If the Street Profits can beat the Usos, they can get a championship match. So they have a 16-minute match where about 14 minutes is them just beating incessantly on the Street Profits. Finally, the Street Profits make a comeback. They end up outside. The Street Profits barely beat the count. They win via count out, okay? So if you haven't subscribed to Peacock yet, we got an extra, you know, five, ten bucks lying around, you can pay your money. So hopefully you'll see the Street Profits beat the Usos via count out in a championship match. Because we know that can happen. Bobby Lashley segment, Theory came down, they had a flexing contest, Lashley wanted a title match, Theory said you don't deserve it, and so uh, he didn't get it. Veer faced Dominic Mysterio, they went nine minutes, Veer beat on him for nine minutes, Dominic got a short comeback. Veer killed him. Veer went to put him in his move to finish him clean in the middle of the ring. And Rey Mysterio ran in and drop kicked Veer for the DQ because these damn Mysterios are the most, the worst sports imaginable. You know when you tell your kids, be a good sport? Well, don't have your kids watch Rey Mysterio because these Mysterios are the worst. Judgment Day comes out. As noted, they're going to announce a new member. And uh, long story short, they call out Finn Balor. And uh, Edge says, man, I was so happy when they told them that you wanted to be the new member. Like, that's so great. And then uh, Damian Priest does his promo, and he says, you know, Edge, we learned a lot from you. And what we learned is to get rid of the excess baggage. And so we're prepared tonight to get rid of of the final piece of excess baggage. And that's you, Edge. And they turn on Edge, and they beat him up, and they put him through a table, and they leave him for dead. Because at the end of the day, they want to make Edge a babyface. But in fact, Edge didn't turn babyface. The Judgment Day turned heel even though they're already heels, and they laid out Edge. So if you're wondering why we have no baby faces ever, well, this is classic WWE playbook right here. Almost beat Cedric Alexander in eight seconds and then was uh, confronted by the Dirty Dogs, as I noted earlier. Why? I don't have any idea. But stand up for WWE. Ezekiel... Beat Otis in two minutes. And then afterwards, Ezekiel, who was beaten clean by Kevin Owens at the pay-per-view, says, I want another match with Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens comes out and he's like, brother, I beat you clean at the pay-per-view. Why would I give you another match? Which is a great question. But then he decides, you know what? I will give you another match on one condition. And the one condition is you need to admit that you are Elias. And Ezekiel hems and haws, and he puts his head down, and he finally goes, you know what? My name is Elias. Kevin Owens is so happy, and he celebrates. And as he's laughing, Ezekiel says, so do I get the match? And Kevin Owens goes, yeah. And so then Ezekiel goes, well, I took a page out of your playbook. I lied. I'm actually Ezekiel, not Elias. But now Kevin Owens is trapped in his own stipulation to give this guy a match. He can't get out of this, apparently. He's trapped. His word is his bond. So they're going to have a match next week. And then the main event was Rhea Ripley, Alexa Bliss, Liv Morgan, and Dewdrop. I was hoping, because the match is good, I was thinking, man, I'm actually going to be able to just finish this report and have nothing negative to say about anything because everybody worked hard. It was a good match. I thought they all looked good. They all got a chance to shine. Rhea Ripley got the win, and I want to see Rhea Ripley versus Bianca Belair, so that's all good. But at the end of the show, after Rhea Ripley wins, she stands there with Finn Balor and Damian Priest, and they play Edge's music because of course they did. And that, my friends, is Monday Night Raw.
I did it. I got it done. You did. You did indeed. Maybe a little too hard on the riddle Miz thing. Why? A little bit. One, Maurice looks fantastic. She's oh, aging God. incredibly, incredibly well. Hey, look. Yes, her breasts are a, large. That doesn't make this better. A very pretty, a very pretty woman. But look, you have him. They're hyping up a show where he's a pure baby face, where he's this wacky family guy afterwards. So you have a segment to hype the show, and you have Riddle defeat this guy. Yes, there's comedy involved because it's The Miz. But then you also at least have... On the seemingly a riddle Champa match coming up, and I'm actually good with that as he gets to Roman Reigns. So I think maybe you were a little too hard on that, but yeah. I'm glad you're playing this role today, so I don't have to. <laughs> God. But yeah, there were a lot of things like the Becky Lynch thing, like repetitive ideas. I mean, pro and con of, of Edge is no Edge, and I think that's a good thing to have them away from him. With that said, how they got rid of Edge, like you mentioned earlier on, Made no sense whatsoever. And as far as Kevin Owens and Ezekiel goes, as long as Kevin Owens is out there, I'll deal with the feud. Sangha versus Lee stands on Lee's chest when she's down. Bangs her, uh, her on the apron. Pull, um. Puts elbow on her chin. Threw her out of the ring. You know, it doesn't really matter a lot in 2022, Granny, but uh, no. Lee, in fact... He identifies as a man. <laughs> Legend time, versus woman. Perez. That was another NXT. Can you believe the little guy beat him? He beat Legend. A that. little guy? It's now small. Roxanne Perez is a man? Yeah. Roxanne. <laughs> no. no, these were two women. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be kidding me, Granny. you got to be kidding me today. God. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.